Good morning, everyone, uh, and, and thank you for uh, joining us today. Um, just, just by way of introduction, uh, before we get into the content, uh, my name is Mark McCatherine. I'm the Commercial Director for Global Reviews, uh, responsible for the health insurance sector. And Leah Purdy, our Senior Client Advisor, uh, is going to be walking us through the research today on uh, some of the advanced features recently implemented across industry websites uh, and their impact on uh, customer experience. Um, throughout the uh, presentation, you might, you might notice that in some, some areas there are some brands that may not be represented in the data. Uh, don't be alarmed by that uh, as we're actually going into field over the next quarter. So if you're interested in having your brand represented in the Global Reviews Digital uh, Effectiveness Program moving forward, just reach out to us at the end of the session and uh, we can look at discussing uh, how we might be able to do that for you. Um, so without delaying the content any further, uh, as we have quite a lot to get through, I'd like to hand it over to Leah Purdy. Thanks, Leah. Awesome. Thank you so much, Mark. Thank you so much for joining us today, everybody. Uh, as Mark mentioned, we're going to be looking through the health insurance industry today and some of the changes that have occurred over the past few months. So we'll quickly tell you a little bit about who we are at Global Reviews and our research methodology, look at some top level industry metrics, and then we're going to jump in and have a look at how this increased functionality and advanced features are improving the customer experience or whether we are overcomplicating uh, the experience for users online. Okay, so at Global Reviews, we are a digital consumer analytics and competitive intelligence provider. We work over multiple markets uh, and this really enables us to identify best practice and trends uh, globally. We've been around for about 15 years, uh, so we have a huge amount of experience benchmarking the online experience uh, and working with our clients on their ongoing optimization programs. Uh, as you can see, we work across multiple uh, industries, so very strong in banking, travel, uh, utilities, sports betting, etc. And again, this enables us to see what's going on in other industries and advise our clients on what's really working outside of their market. Market, um, but may be highly effective uh, within their industry. So what do we do? We are really about providing those additional metrics that you don't see in your everyday analytics, uh, providing that customer view which really enables you to benchmark yourselves, um, see where you're at within your industry and also uh, identify where you should aspire to be. In addition to that, we are uh, very much focus on actionable insights. So as I mentioned, working with our customers on their ongoing optimization programs to work with them to really increase conversion online. And that may be acquisition of new customers. It may also be member engagement or customer satisfaction, um, but really about making sure that you're achieving, giving yourself the best chance to achieve your online objectives. So quickly running through our research methodology, uh, please do let us know if you've got any questions because um, we're going to zoom through this. But essentially at Global Reviews, we work across the entire customer journey. So we're not just looking at conversion rate in isolation or brand awareness in isolation, but really looking at how those different phases tie in together and impact each other. We run a series of uh, studies, the first one being our Digital Marketing Effectiveness Study, or DME, which we will refer to a little bit today. The DME focuses on the first two phases of the journey. So discover if someone decides they'd like to uh, change health insurance providers or purchase health insurance online, are they aware of your brand? What's their feeling about your brand? Uh, are you likely to make it into the consideration set? The consider phase is really about understanding what experience you're offering online. So how easy is it for them to find a product on your website that may be suitable to them? Uh, what information are you providing them? And uh, essentially the impact that your website has on the research phase, either positively or negatively for your brand. The next study that we run is our Digital Sales Effectiveness, or DSE, and this really focuses on the on-site experience. So covering off that consider phase, but also understanding how easy you're making it for 
uh, prospective customers to purchase or join with you online? Uh, what can you do to decrease in abandonment and increase conversion rates? And finally, we won't talk to it today, but we do also uh, perform service effectiveness studies. So understanding how uh, you can better engage and serve your members online. For the DSE, which we're focusing on mainly today, we have four key inputs. The first one is customer behavior. So monitoring and tracking what people do online, how they navigate throughout your site and whether they're able to find what they're looking for. Customer attitude, so it, you know, emotion plays a really key part here. So understanding whether they like your site, whether they feel satisfied by the experience. Customer audit, identifying what is really important to our customers, uh, what kind of features or uh, functions are really important to them when they're researching health insurance online. And finally, we tie that all in with our best practice audit, which is around about 500 criteria uh, of what we deem to be best practice uh, in offering a, a really high level of customer experience for health insurance online. Okay, so looking at some industry results. So what we're looking at here are the overall scores for the digital sales effectiveness uh, that we ran in April this year. So you can see that HCF and Boopa currently leading the way uh, with the industry average at 51%. The biggest change uh, in April compared to the previous time that we ran the study was health.com.au. They've implemented some really big uh, changes on their site and it resulted in an 11% increase in score, which shifted them from last place within the industry to fifth. The other small change that happened was that GMHBA moved above NIB, both due to a slight increase and decrease in score um, for those two brands. Um, within our DME uh, study, we ask our consumers to research some health insurance brands online and then tell us who they would choose as their final preference if they were to purchase before we ask them to, before they commence researching, we ask them to, unprompted, to name the top five health insurance brands that come to mind. Uh, and these are the results here for uh, June 15. So 80% of all of our consumers uh, thought of Bupa as one of their top five health insurance brands. So Bupa and Medibank, uh, really strong in the very important month of June. And what we're able to understand is how preferences change and recall um, is impacted throughout the research process. So here we can see the final preferences in the all important month of June. Um, so 23% of our consumers chose Bupa as their final preference after researching. Uh, and we can see a really strong correlation here between brand recall and final preference. Uh, some changes, so compared to the previous study, uh, Bupa's share of final preferences actually decreased and uh, this was taken up by Medibank and NIB who performed stronger uh, in June this year. What we're able to do within our digital marketing effectiveness study is filter by certain behaviours, uh, whether someone is an custom, existing customer of a particular brand. Um, and when we filter by those who use an aggregator within their search research phase, um, we're able to identify that NIB, obviously strong relationships with aggregators, Medibank choosing not to engage um, in that area at the moment, that the impact was uh, so strong that NIB received more final preferences than Medibank within that pool of people. So um, a, a strategy that's really working for NIB at the moment, um, as, as we know, many people uh, use aggregators to research and don't actually purchase on those sites. We asked uh, our consumers what the most important elements uh, were for websites when they're researching health insurance. And the top three answers were information about costs and payment, information that's easy to understand, and the ability to easily view features and benefits. As we know, health insurance is one of the most complex products and services that 
um, you know, you need to articulate to customers on site. And I guess these three elements really feed into what we're talking about today. It's really about the balance of how much information and how much uh, tailored functionality do, you, do we provide to our consumers um, whilst balancing that with the ease of use. Uh, and this is really what we're, we're looking to question um, today. And today's really not about identifying uh, a definitive answer of what is working, what isn't working, um, but really just about highlighting some things that we need to keep in mind um, as we are moving websites into this uh, really exciting um, phase of health insurance websites at the moment. So here's a bit of a, a snapshot of what health insurance websites looked like a few years ago. And as we know, there's been an incredible amount of change over the past couple of years and um, especially more recently. It's really exciting. We work across uh, health insurance in both the UK and Ireland and Australian health insurance websites are really leading the pack and offering um, much more attractive, sophisticated, richer experiences online at the moment. And um, it's great to see that it's very customer led and we just need to make sure um, that, uh, you know, these advances are still tying back to a really great customer experience. So we've seen an increased use of icons uh, increased use of animation, colour, and also dynamic needs-based tailoring options, which is, which is great to really provide this uh, richer experience. So gone are the days where health insurance was purely offered based on, on the cheapest or um, the best cover. Now many brands really enabling users to drill down and identify the product that they need or how much they want to pay based on tax, based on uh, lifestyle choices, family status, and also specific health requirements. But essentially what we're looking at today is, is this increased functionality and ability to personalise providing an improved customer and, and simpler customer experience? Okay, so we'll jump in. What we're looking at here are the customer journeys or click paths of our consumers when we ask them to complete certain tasks uh, that represent common tasks people would uh, complete on a health insurance site when, when looking for a new provider. What we've seen in this uh, most recent study is some really long, wide customer journeys which identifies to us that they are finding it quite difficult to find what they're looking for. We also had quite a few examples where consumers are repeatedly hitting the correct page where that product is found, but they're not able to identify uh, that that is the right product or they're not able to find the information that they're looking for. So we're going to have a look at a few examples of why this might be. So here's an example of Frank. Um, Frank offering the opportunity to select your hospital and then your extras cover. So here we're looking at at the top of the page, you've got the quote summary. So once you've selected your hospital's package or extras, that updates. And um, just below, we can see the options there for hospital packages. And what we found is that only 20% of users were able to, to find the product that we asked them to look for. Some of the uh, voice of customer was that they found it difficult to find the options, they weren't sure where to click and they found it complica complicated and clustered. 25% users said that, 25 of users said they uh, f weren't sure where to start looking. So I find this one interesting because essentially all the elements are there, the call to actions add to quote are there, uh, you know, it does look like a call to action. Um, the quote summary is highlighted, but for some reason, people are finding it difficult to understand what the process is within this page. Some users found it uh, difficult or weren't able to find the monthly option to view, sorry, the option to view price by month. And now this isn't, um, you know, one of the most important call to actions. Uh, if someone does want monthly costs, but 
they're only shown weekly, then it's not a huge issue. Um, but what we want to highlight here is that it's just really important to make sure that uh, with all these increased options to tailor and customize, it's really important to make sure that the most important ones are visible to your users or prospective customers. Um, users weren't sure where to start and the call to, calls to action weren't obvious. Um, so why is this when, as I said, all of the options, all of the elements really are there to um, speak to the customer? One of the things that may be an issue is that the quote summary at the top of the page is quite large and it does push the package options below the fold. Um, it's really about communicating with your um, prospective customers. So users may be uh, used to product pages that are very simple, they land on the page, bam, there are the four options for them. If we are moving towards a slightly different structure in page, that's absolutely fine. Um, we just need to make sure that we're taking our customers with us. So potentially just ensuring that the add to quote buttons are just visible above the fold will help guide our um, prospective customers uh, to the lower in the page. Um, we are absolutely moving to more of a scrolling um, behavior as a society, but we just need to make sure that as a large portion of health insurance research is still done on desktop, um, that it's still a good user experience on that platform. One of the other uh, elements that may be a factor here is the use of color. So whilst the add to quote calls to action are a slightly different color and are um, shown in such somewhat of a three dimension, um, it is a similar color to the quote summary uh, title. So just making sure that we are really making it clear what the flow of the page is and what the user is required to do. So as I mentioned in summary, it's really important, whilst it might be clear to many people uh, and all of the elements there, we need to make sure that the starting point and the process is really clear and absolutely fine to structure your page in a, in a non-standard navigation uh, or direction, but uh, just need to communicate that to our users. We've seen an, uh, a huge increase in uh, dynamic filtering options and here's an example of HCF where uh, they're providing the options to identify what your key health uh, requirement is, so whether it be optical, pregnancy, uh, physiotherapy, etc. What happens on uh, the HCF website is that once you've selected your uh, filter options, it actually uh, identifies the products that are suitable for your requirements and those packages that are not that don't meet your needs are slightly faded out in this lighter color you can see here and uh, you're not able to click on them. What we found is that many users uh, were really weren't sure on this. They they couldn't. They all of, all of a sudden found that they couldn't select certain products, um, and they it wasn't clear to them that this was because of the uh, choices that they had made. So essentially, the approach within this quote uh, tool hasn't been effective in communicating what's going on uh, to the to the consumer. Health.com.au has a similar uh, functionality where you can uh, identify what your primary need is, whether it is that you would like the cheapest cover or the best cover, and then the products presented to you are filtered. You can see here though that they're taking a bit of a different approach and really overtly presenting the reason, uh, sorry, the fact that uh, Vitality 65 is not available uh, for this specific requirement um, and the message there is, uh, is, is really clear and obvious. So it's important to just make sure that if you are providing this advanced functionality to tailor um, to your customer needs, which is excellent, you just need to make sure it really clearly communicates to them what happens and that it is happening because of choices they've made and you're trying to better meet their needs. One option may be if you don't like um, as an obvious um, strategy as health.com.au has taken is potentially just offer those messages if they hover on a package that isn't available. 
Um, what you're looking at here is the uh, customer journey on Australian Unity when we ask them to find a specific uh, package, including optical and pregnancy, and only 11% were successful in finding uh, this package. And the key reason here was really that they were unable to find the additional information that wasn't immediately presented on the page. Uh, the feedback that we received was that they couldn't find the optical information, uh, they found it extremely complex uh, and it was difficult to identify the difference between different products. So here you're, we're looking at the product range page, so I've, uh, we've put in our uh, details about um, who we are and we're presented with uh, two options here, Mid Hospital and also Platinum Hospital. Uh, the optical information, you can he see here that Australian Unity has taken an iconographic uh, approach with presenting the top level information and providing uh, that additional information behind this more details uh, option below. Absolutely with the uh, huge amount of information that we need to provide for health insurance packages, recommend uh, not providing all information and overloading the on first glance and overloading the, the visitor, but absolutely making that uh, information available as Australian Unity has here. But we just need to make sure that the visitor is really clear on where that information is if they do want to find it. So 33% of people on the Australian Unity website said it took them a long time to find the information and it was difficult to understand what the difference between the products were. So Australian Unity um, is suffering somewhat because uh, it is difficult to, the icons aren't providing uh, a clear ability to compare products and people aren't able to find the additional uh, extras information. So just make, um, it's important to make sure that uh, these additional details are uh, really evident and easy to find. So we ran this study in April, as I mentioned, and in that time, uh, uh, Booba has since made uh, changes to their website. But in our April study, they had the highest success rate for our product-related tasks. And at the time, their website was very much uh, taking more of a traditional approach to some of the other websites, um, but they, they achieved success. So uh, we're going to have a quick look into this. So as I mentioned, running quite a quite a simple style um, within the quote tool, but the options and the uh, adjustable elements are really clear. Again, these may not be, uh, you know, for other brands, they may choose uh, not to make the uh, weekly fortnightly payment options as visible, it may not be as important. Um, but the point I want to make here is not that we should really go back and simplify our website um, and take away all of this functionality. And what, I'm, what we want to point out is that we need to ensure that whilst we are moving forward within the industry, that it is really important to always bring ourselves back, rein in that designer and make sure that uh, we are still providing an easy uh, experience for the customer and that they can find what they're looking for. As I mentioned, health.com.au uh, had a huge increase in score in our April study. And one of the key contributors to this was uh, the element of our study matching products to needs. And they almost doubled their score, which took them to second place within the industry. Uh, health.com.au providing uh, different options to filter. And when they show the results, they're articulating back to you uh, that these products are the ones that do offer what you have specified you require. And it's also um, taking that opportunity to further articulate the value proposition of that product. Um, one of the other reasons for health.com.au's success, um, this is here we're looking at their product details page. So, but they're still giving you that ability to navigate to a different product without using the back button within the browser, um, less or more cover. 
within this page still giving you the ability to update some of those uh, details that are adjustable. One interesting thing here is that all the editable fields are demonstrated in a consistent and clear manner. What we found in the health insurance industry is that a lot of brands have really great functionality to compare, uh, to adjust certain metrics, um, but customers aren't finding them because they're using uh, expandable fields with arrows, radio buttons, sliders, uh, a whole range of different uh, action indicators and customers are missing them. So again, not saying that everything needs to be consistent. We just need to make sure that we are cl clearly communicating uh, the possible actions to our, to our visitors. Another thing I thought was interesting uh, on this product details page is the use of colour. So the top um, element of this page uh, really articulating the branding of this product using the strong color of purple, and then the editable fields and the actions uh, cleverly portrayed on that lighter gray color so that the actions are uh, clearly stand out. So as we mentioned, we've seen an increased use of icons, um, and there's a huge amount of benefits to using icons. They break up the page and draw the eye to specific to important points we want to make, uh, communicating quickly. They add context and increase the meaning to the user. And of course, they make the page more aesthetically pleasing um, in you know, what can be sometimes quite a, quite a dry uh, amount of text that we, we need to offer because there is so much important information. At the time we ran the study, uh, this is how uh, it was split. So HTF and Medibank um, also now offering uh, comparison tables with no icons um, to give the users a, a different experience depending on what their preferences are. Um, during the study, our brands that were utilising icons uh, for their top level information achieved quite low scores across our product related tasks. So um, for every brand, they had less than 20% success uh, for one of the product related tasks. On the flip side of that, the brands not using icons uh, had, had much better success. So there was only one task amongst these five competitors who uh, received a success rate of lower than 20% uh, for one of those tasks during, those peri during that period. So absolutely not saying here that icons are evil and ineffective. Um, what we want to do is highlight here that and we know there are a, a lot of research going out here amongst our brands um, that are looking into the, the use and the effectiveness of icons. And it is just that to be really careful when you are using them. Uh, let's not just assume that they're more effective and uh, they make the site look pretty and people can understand them because there's a tooth there next to the word dental. Um, we really need to make sure that the visitors are finding what they need to easily. As we know, we scan pages um, and we, we need to make sure that it's easy to compare products if we, as we've seen earlier. Within our digital marketing effectiveness study, uh, we ask our, uh, our consumers who they considered or shortlisted is the term that we used. And we've seen an increasing amount of people who actually at the end of the study have said that they haven't shortlisted any brands throughout their research process. And there's an increasing number of people who are stating that the reason for that is that websites are just within the health insurance are just becoming too complex. So this is, um, it's a really interesting time within health insurance. It's wonderful that we're becoming increasingly customer focused and able to provide this additional functionality. Um, but we need to make sure that at the end of the day, we are um, meeting customers' needs and making it easy for them to uh, find what they're looking for and purchase health insurance online. So in summary, uh, make sure that the process and the next steps are really clear. Uh, there are some brands doing this very well. Uh, within health insurance and it's all about using, not necessarily using verbal communication, but also that non-verbal communication, as I mentioned, such as how the page is laid out, uh, the use of colour, the use of calls to action. 
Clearly communicate your filtering options and make sure that we're tying it back to the customer needs. Ensure that the use of icons is uh, not inhibiting comparison. Make access to further details and options highly visible. And at the end of the day, we are absolutely not saying that you should shy away from improving functionality and making beautiful websites. Uh, it's definitely been, um, I absolutely feel that we are offer in, moving in the right direction, offering a, a hugely uh, improved customer experience for health insurance online. Uh, but we need to make sure that customer experience is always uh, trumping a beautiful, the most beautiful website or the most, the fanciest website. Uh, so, as I mentioned, it's great to be working with the health insurance industry at this time uh, and seeing that so many of the brands are working in what seems to be a really agile environment, so updates happening all the time. Uh, these are just some examples of updates that have happened since our last study, uh, so HBF uh, moving to an iconographic uh, approach, and IB have uh, made some significant updates. Um, as well as Medibank implementing um, some changes as well, to name a few. Um, and again, it's uh, a really interesting time to be involved with this and we just need to make sure that we're always coming back and identif trying to improve on finding that balance between information, advanced functionality and ease of use, um, being mindful of how we're using these tools um, and understanding how um, our experience is impacting uh, the customer during that research phase. Uh, so as Mark mentioned, our next study is coming up in October. Um, so please do get in touch if you'd like to be a part of that. Uh, just to let you give you a quick overview of what you've seen today versus uh, what our clients see. Today, we've really uh, just kind of touched the surface in terms of the insights that we have, given you a, a quick overview of uh, some things that are happening in the industry. Uh, for our clients, um, a huge amount of research in terms of um, all aspects of not only the on-site experience, but also understanding behavior uh, within that research phase in our digital marketing effectiveness study, understanding not only what they're doing, but why, why they're choosing other brands. Um, norm, our, all of our clients get access to the data within our online portal. Um, standard is we execute um, two workshops with our clients per annum to not only just hand you the data, but really work with you to identify what the data means and partner with you on what your digital, whether it be a digital transformation, complete overhaul, or just implementing and refining, um, you know, within health insurance at the moment, it is those small tiny tweaks that are making huge differences at the moment. Uh, so we're absolutely there to partner with you and, and understand what our data is saying. Uh, and we also do a huge amount of bespoke projects, um, quali mixing qualitative and quantitative research. So whether you've got some wireframes that you'd like reviewed um, by consumers or by us internally, uh, to make sure that you're on the right track before you do spend that huge amount of money to uh, develop in full. Um, so that's it really. I will just hand back over to Mark to uh, close us off for today. But um, thank you so much for joining us today, guys. Thanks, thanks, Leah. Um, that's uh, quite a bit of content to get through in a short space of time. Um, as, as Leah pointed out, we're, we're running our health industry program with uh, quite a broad client base uh, in the sector, as you saw up front. Uh, and if you're interested in, in getting involved in the program and understanding how uh, some of these unique insights uh, can help uh, with your sales conversions and sales targets, by all means, uh, feel free to uh, contact me. Um, the information is up there on the slide. Um, I'm happy to have a chat and we can explore um, where the fit might be. Um, we'll also be sending through a copy of the recording of the presentation to all the attendees. Um, so keep a lookout for that. Um, I'm sure you can distribute it to those other members of your business that you think need to be across this and weren't able to attend. Um, so again, on, on, on that note, the final note, uh, we'll sign off. And I would just like to thank everyone again for your attendance and uh, say enjoy the rest of your day.